In this lecture, we continue with examples on circuits with an operational amplifier. In our analysis, we will be working with the infinite gain ideal open model. Here is our first example. Obtain the input and transfer characteristics of the following circuit, which I will put on board soon. characteristics for the circuit that has the following topology. and that current we label I. Okay. And this is where we collect the output waveform. Okay, so that's our output signal. And in this circuit we will try to figure out the relation between uh, input voltage and the current that that's drawn by uh, the open circuit. And we will try to figure out also the relation between input voltage and output voltage. Okay, as I said, we will be working with the infinite gain of that model. Okay, so what we do in general to solve an OPAM circuit, and that was how we uh, approached the problems that we considered in our previous lectures, is very simple. What we do is we obtain an expression for V minus the node voltage at the inverting input in terms of input voltage and output voltage. But if we have more than one input, then in terms of input voltage and the output voltage. And we do the same thing for the other node, okay? Non inverting input node or for V plus. And then the expressions that we obtain will be valid for all regions because we will not be making any assumptions regarding the mode of the operational amplifier when obtaining those expressions. And once we have those expressions in our hands, all we have to do is go region by region and apply the conditions or the constraints on V plus, V minus and V out to, uh, to reach the relation between, for instance, the input voltage and the output voltage. So therefore, the very first step, step one, or perhaps step zero, is obtaining V minus and V plus in terms of uh, input and output. So V plus is very easy. Okay. Oh, uh, one more thing. All the examples that we considered so far were uh, those in which the feedback was either positive feedback, that is, the output uh, node communicates with the uh, inverted non inverted input, or the other case, that is, the output terminal communicates with the inverted input. Okay. In this example, the output node, the output terminal, or the output voltage, it communicates both with the inverted input and the non-inverting input terminals. Okay? Therefore, we have a mixture of both negative feedback and positive feedback. And depending on the choices for the parameter values of those uh, LTI resistors, one of 
those feedbacks in a positive feedback or negative feedback would dominate over the other. Okay. So let's obtain E plus. Remember that because of the model that we're using, there's no current escaping into the op-amp through the input terminals. Therefore, this node voltage can simply be uh, computed by voltage division. Okay, this is ground, and here we have the output voltage. Therefore, this voltage should be R3 over the overall resistance seen by the output voltage, which is R3 plus R3. So V plus simply equals this ratio times the output voltage, okay, by voltage division. So that's V plus, which does not directly depend on the input voltage. Now we're going to do the same thing for V minus. Okay. So for that, let's write down the known equation here. The sum of this current plus that current plus that current must equal zero. Okay. Remember that this current is negligible. Therefore, all we have to do to figure out V minus is writing the known equation at this node, which is V minus minus V in over R1, which is this current, and plus V minus minus V out over the resistance in between two. Okay, and by KCL that must equal zero. And this equation will directly give us V minus in terms of V in and V out. So we have V minus equals R2 over R1 plus R2 V in plus R1 R1 plus R2 V out. Let's call this equation equation number two. Okay. So if you were to uh, obtain the transfer characteristics only, then these were what we would have needed. But we also asked for the input and current input voltage and current relation. Therefore, let's also write the uh, input current, okay, the current drawn by the op-amp circuit in terms of the input and output voltages. Okay. So, and the current equals okay, this current equals V in minus V minus divided by R1, and V minus is here. Therefore. From that expression, we can obtain I. But there is an even shorter way. Since there is no current escaping to uh, the open through this wire, therefore, therefore we can ignore that wire. Okay? That is, we can replace this by open circuit, just for analysis purposes. Okay? And then what we have is V in here, V out here, and the resistance in between is R1 plus R2. Therefore, this current must be V in minus V out over R1 plus R2. 1 over R1 plus R2 times the difference between the voltages. Okay, so let's call this equation 3. And note that we didn't make any assumptions regarding the uh, operation mode of the operation line of fire. Therefore, these three equations must be valid in all regions. Okay, now for Simplicity of notation, let's introduce some shortcuts. For instance, define beta as R3 over R3 plus R4. So we are dealing with, unless otherwise, otherwise stated, we are always working with passive resistors. Okay, therefore these are positive numbers. So that means beta is somewhere between 0 and 1. And Likewise, define gamma as R1 over R1 plus R2. Note that. They're both between 0 and 1. Okay. And the interpretation of those coefficients or numbers can be as follows. Note that beta. Uh, is this ratio of R3 over R3 plus R4 and R3 and R4 they are the resistors 
or the resistance that appear in the positive feedback. So therefore, beta is, in a sense, indicator of the strength of positive feedback okay, in the circuit. And similarly, for gamma, since R1 and R2, they appear in the uh, negative feedback connection, this parameter, gamma, uh, in a sense, is an indicator of the strength of negative feedback. Okay, so we have everything we need in order to start the region by region analysis. So let's do that. Let's start with the new region. Okay. Where these two voltages be plus and B minus, they are equal or their difference is zero. And okay. the output voltage is between negative saturation voltage and positive saturation voltage. For simplicity, we took the uh, negative saturation voltage and positive saturation voltage to have equal magnitudes, but in general, they would have to be of equal magnitude. Okay. So by equating B plus to B minus, B plus is here and B minus here, what we're going to do is we're going to obtain the equivalent relationship in linear region and then Having obtained the out in terms of the in, we will plug that expression into this constraint here, and that will give us the range of input voltage, okay, in which the expression or the relation, the out relation that we will have found, will be valid. So let's do that. Equations one and two. One is we plus expression and two is V minus expression. Immediately yields the following. Beta V out. Now that this thing we're now calling beta. Beta V out equals, and this is gamma, and this is clearly one minus gamma. One minus gamma V in plus gamma V out. And this immediately gives us the out in terms of V in. The out equals 1 minus gamma over beta minus gamma times V in. Okay, so it's quite straightforward. Now, having figured the input output relation, let's find the uh, constraint on the input voltage under which this relation we obtain is valid. For that, let's introduce a new shortcut, define V bar as the following positive number. Beta minus gamma, one minus gamma, times the saturation voltage. Okay. And then, with this shortcut, in linear region, or in order for the open to remain in linear region, the input voltage must be between minus V bar and V bar. Okay, so this is the condition under which the open is in linear region. And how we obtain that condition is very simple. This is V out in terms of V in in linear region. So you take this expression and put it here. Okay, so this thing, something times V in, must be V minus yes and plus yes. And then you divide all the sides by one word that's something. And what you obtain is, uh, thanks to the new notation that we introduced, V in is in between minus V bar and V bar. Okay, in order for the open to remain in the linear region. So that's the transfer characteristics. Let's also obtain the input characteristics and then we can move on to saturation region. Input characteristics, we need the expression here. 
Now that this holds at all regions, and now we're in linear region. Therefore, we know V out in terms of V in. So we can replace V out here with this expression that we have just found, and that will give us the relation between the current drawn by the op amp circuit and the input voltage. Okay, so three immediately yields I equals one R1 plus R2 times, okay, let's rewrite this as one minus VR over V in times V in. Okay, and V out over V in is this thing here. So that equals one over R1 plus R2. One minus one minus gamma. Okay. That's our relation. Okay, so this simplified yields one over R1 plus R2 times beta minus one over beta minus gamma. And with this, our analysis for the linear region is complete. We have the input-output relationship, we have the input and input, input voltage and input current relationship, and we have the condition under which those relations hold. Okay, let's introduce one last shortcut. Define G as the magnitude of this uh, gain here. Okay, so G is one R one plus R two times beta minus one beta minus gamma. Okay. Now that depending on so it's always negative, and depending on which one is larger, either beta or gamma the denominator could be either positive or negative. So the overall thing could be either positive or negative. And likewise, for the input-out relationship, this is always positive on minus gamma. Right. And depending on which one is larger, we have either a positive gain or a negative gain. Okay. Now let's do the saturation region analysis, and then we can summarize our findings uh, eventually in a set of curves. Positive saturation region. So this is the condition. V plus must be larger than V minus okay, for positive saturation. And as for the output voltage, there is nothing to compute. It's fixed at the positive saturation voltage. Okay, and V out equals Yes. Now, again, using first and second equations, which were valid at all regions, we have beta V0, which is V plus, greater than 1 minus gamma Vn plus gamma V out. And this was R V minus. So this is the condition. Okay, for which, or under which the open is in post saturation region. Also, we can simplify this further because we know that in post saturation region the output voltage is ES. So, replacing the out with ES will give us a condition on the input voltage here. So, beta ES larger than 1 minus gamma V in plus gamma ES. For V in less than beta minus gamma, one minus gamma. Yes. So this guarantees that the op-amp is in plus saturation region. Okay. Now this is positive, and if beta is larger than gamma, then this is V bar. On the other hand, if beta is smaller than gamma, then this is minus V bar. Not that V bar we find as the magnitudes, therefore it's always positive. Now, 
similarly for the exercise stretching region. Okay. Before that, we also have to figure out the excuse me, input characteristics. So, so let's also do that. Okay, so three implies that I equals one over R1 plus R2 times the difference between input and output voltages. Okay. V in minus V out. But now we're in positive saturation region and V out is fixed at ES and for the input characteristics is simply this we can be positive saturation region. Now as for negative saturation region, we have now the direction of inequality is reversed between V plus and V minus, and V out is now fixed at minus yes. Okay. So following similar arguments to here, again using equations one, two, and three, we can simply write V in larger than minus beta minus gamma one minus gamma yes. Okay. In order for the open to be in positive uh, negative saturation region and the current is 1 over R1 plus R2 times the difference between V in and V out. Okay? Now V out is minus yes, therefore V in minus minus yes is V in plus yes. So this is the input characteristics for negative saturation region. Okay. So our analysis is now complete. Let's put all these findings in, uh, in a graphical representation so that we see certain things in a clearer way. Depending on which one is stronger, that is either positive feedback or negative feedback, we have three, well, two cases, two uh, classes. And there's an intermediate class, you can consider that as the third type or third class between those two classes, okay? So cases are. We're going to go through three cases, okay? Beta larger than gamma case, so this is positive feedback, it is stronger than negative feedback. We're going to consider the reverse situation, negative feedback stronger than the positive feedback. And we can also consider the intermediate case where the strengths of positive and negative feedback are equal. So when beta larger than gamma, we have the following transfer characteristics. In versus the out. And here let's squeeze the uh, input characteristics. V in versus I. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the, the gain is positive when beta is larger than gamma, according to the expression that we obtain. Therefore, in linear region, the slope is positive, okay? the slope that relates the output voltage to input voltage. Okay? So eventually, the op-amp reaches positive saturation at one end and negative saturation at the other end. So this is where it reaches positive saturation. Yes, and this is where it reaches negative saturation, minus yes. And the voltages corresponding to V in for which the saturation is reached 
we denote by v bar and minus v bar. Minus v bar. Okay. So once the op amp reaches saturation, then in positive saturation, uh, or in order to remain in positive saturation, v in has to be less than something, and in order to remain in negative saturation, v in has to be greater than something. Okay. So here we reach negative saturation, and v in has to be greater than something, so that we remain in negative saturation region. V in being greater than something means that we're going toward right. Okay. So therefore, for all these values, it's possible that the open is in negative saturation region. And for positive saturation region, it was V in less than something. V in being less than something means that you go to the left toward minus infinity. Therefore, this is uh, how the positive saturation tail of the curve extends. Okay, so that's the input output relationship when positive feedback is stronger than negative feedback. Now, as for the input characteristics, when beta is larger than gamma, the slope is negative, turns out, and the magnitude of the slope we call G. This is V bar, and this is minus V bar. And the slope is minus g. And then in saturation, the slope is 1 over r1 plus r2. Okay. So from this point on, the slope of the line will be 1 over r1 plus r2. Now the question is, where are we going once we reach negative saturation? Once we reach negative saturation, that means when the input equal equals minus v bar, we go to the right, okay, to remain in negative saturation region. Going to right means that we're going this way. And the slope is 1 over r1 plus r2. And once we reach post saturation, to remain in post saturation, we go left. Going left means we can extend this curve like that. Okay, so that the in is going left. And the slope is the same as the other saturation region. This is the shape for input voltage and input current. Okay, for the other case, beta smaller than gamma, let me quickly sketch them to be in, be out, and we have be in versus I. Zero. Zero. This time, these slopes here for beta greater than gamma, they change uh, They change sign. Okay, so we have now something like that for the transfer characteristics, and something like this for the input characteristics. Okay, slope now is G and. V bar and minus V bar. Yes. Minus yes. Okay. Now, how we extend the, uh, the tails to remain in negative saturation region? We go to right. To remain in positive saturation region, we go left. And here, we do the same thing here. This is negative saturation, and here this is positive saturation. Okay. Minus the bar. The slope here is 1 over r1 plus r2, and the slope here is 1 over r1 plus r2. Okay. And it's not now difficult to see what's going to happen in the borderline case when beta equals gamma. Note that as gamma becomes smaller and uh, closer and closer to beta, this slope here becomes steeper and steeper. And then once gamma becomes larger than beta, the slope now changes sign.
Okay? And right in the middle, in the borderline, what we have is we have infinite edge slope. And likewise for the input characteristics. Therefore, we have the following curves for the case where positive and negative feedback strengths are equal to one another. And the third case is beta equals gamma case. The in versus the out. The in versus I. Yes, minus yes. So this is by the way negative set. This is positive set. This is positive set. And what we have here is the yes over R1 plus R2 and minus ES over R1 plus R2 and the curve goes with slope 1 over R1 plus R2. This is negative set. This is positive set. So those are the three possible cases. Okay, now in our next example, we're going to consider, let's consider something numerical. This was a uh, grammatical example. This is our next example. Again, we can obtain the input and transfer characteristics. And this is the input card. And saturation voltages are given to be minus 16 volts and 16 volts. Okay. Okay. Now what we're going to do is the same as what we did before in our, in 
are all previous examples. Obtain B minus in terms of input and output voltage. Obtain B plus in terms of input and output voltages. And also obtain current in terms of input and output voltages. And those expressions will be valid in all regions. And then once you have those expressions in your hand, we, uh, you can start region by region analysis. Okay. So, B minus is easy in this case because V in is directly connected by a wire and there's no resistance in between to V minus. Therefore, V minus equals V in. There's nothing to compute for that. So that's R1. Now, the next question is what's V plus in terms of input and output voltages? Let's try to figure that out to be able to obtain V plus in terms of other variables. What we can do is we can write KCL at this known. Okay. So the sum of that form, this current plus this current, which is this current plus that current, must equal zero. Okay, so we're gonna add those three currents and equate it to zero, and from there we're gonna obtain an expression okay, representing V plus. So V plus minus V in over Two. Okay. So this is the V plus node. V plus minus this is V in node. V plus minus V in over two is this current. Then we have V plus minus six over the resistance in V is this current. And finally, we have this current, which is V plus minus V out over four. Okay, by KCL, the sum must equal zero. And from this expression, it's obvious that E plus uh, can be expressed in terms of input and output voltages. Okay. So let's find that simple expression on health. Direct right, E plus equals one health V in plus one fourth V out plus some constant term. Okay, and this constant term has to do with this battery here, this six volt. So that's our equation two. And finally, what's the current? Let's also figure that out. I equals, now we're talking about we're talking about this current and this current okay, equals this current plus this current and since there's no current escaping here this current and that current they must be the same therefore this plus that must, keep, must give us what we're looking for I so I equals V in minus V plus over 2. Okay. So this is V plus known voltage. So V in minus V plus over 2 is this component of the car. And then we have V in minus V out over 2. Okay. So that's our car. Now we don't want any V plus anywhere. Therefore, we have to replace that V plus by the expression here, and that will give us current I in terms of input voltage and output voltage. That's what we want. Okay. So that. <coughs> okay, so I equals 3 over 4 V in minus 5 over 8 V out minus 3 over 4, okay? And in going from this line to that line, what we did, we used equation 2. That is, we replaced V plus in terms of, uh, we replaced V plus uh, with the right-hand side that appears in equation 2. So by equation 2, we reach this, and let's call that equation 3. Okay, again, we have everything we need. 
we have the minus expression, we have the plus expression, and also we have expression for car. And all the expressions are in terms of input voltage and output voltage. So we're ready now for our region by region analysis. Speaking by usually the most interesting region in the region. What we have is the condition that the minus and the plus are equal or their difference is zero, and the output voltage is between negative and positive saturation voltages. And for this example, they are given to be plus n uh, minus 60. So V minus equals V plus from equation one and equation two we immediately have V in V minus equals V plus V plus is here one half V in plus one fourth V out plus one point five and that Simplified gives us the out equals to V in minus six. Okay, so that's the input output relation uh, when the op amp is in linear region. Usually, in our previous examples, what we had was V out equals something times V in, but now we have also this constant term, and that constant term has to do with this DC voltage supply here. Okay. <coughs> now let's figure out the Condition under which that relation is valid. Minus 16 less than equal to V out less than equal to 16. So this is the condition. Now we know V out in terms of V in. Okay. So minus 16 less than equal to 2 V in minus 6 less than equal to plus 16. And that yields minus 5. Also in our all previous examples, the uh, lower and upper bound for the input voltage were uh, they had the same magnitude, so we had some symmetry intro, but now intro is not symmetric, and that again has to do with the fact that we have here uh, DC voltage supply. And finally, using equation three, we have I equals three over four V minus five over eight V out, and V out is two V in minus six minus three over four. Okay, so that's the relation between current and input voltage. And this simplified yields R equals minus one half V in plus three. And with that, our analysis for linear region is complete. We have the transfer characteristics, we have input characteristics, and also we have the condition under which those characteristics are valid. Okay. Now we can move on to the positive and negative saturation regions. less than the B plus and there's nothing to compute for the output voltage it's fixed at positive saturation voltage which is 16 volts in this example. Now B minus less than B plus gives us the following B minus is V in at all regions and this is less than B plus 
And V plus expression for V plus is here. One half V plus one fourth V zero plus three over two. And now we out or V zero is sixteen. Okay, so let's therefore write that down. One half V in plus one fourth V out, which is sixteen because we're in post saturation region. Plus three over two. And this immediately gives us the following in less than 11 moles in order for the OPEP to remain in post saturation region. There's nothing to compete, uh, compute, as we said, for the out, but there's something to compute for the input characteristics. And for that, what we're going to do, we're going to use equation 3 once again. Equation 3 gives us i equals 3 over 4. V in minus 5 over 8, V out, V out is 16 minus 3 over 4. And this yields I equals 3 over 4, V in minus 4, 3 over 4. Okay. So that's the input relation. Quickly, let's deal with the negative saturation region. V minus now has to be greater than V plus, and V out is now fixed at minus 16 volts. Okay. So V minus larger than V plus implies V in larger than V plus, which is one half V in plus one fourth V out. V out is minus 60 and plus 3 over 2. And this immediately says V in has to be larger than minus 5 volts. Okay. And the last thing, the last piece of the puzzle is the input characteristics. Okay, for the negative saturation region. Again, using for less time equation 3, i equals 3 over 4, v in minus 5 over 8, v out, v out is minus 16, minus 3 over 4. And this simplified gives us i equals 3 over 4, v in plus 37 over 4. Now, the analysis is complete. Let's put everything we have figured out on a curve so that we see certain things in better light. <coughs> Hence, Hits the post saturation region and in the near region. Okay, this is
that's stimulation for the linear region. And then this is 3, this is minus 6, therefore the slope is 2. Right. And then for input voltage less than in a modes, we read positive saturation region, therefore less than means we go to the left. So that's what's this happen. We are plus 16. And if and voltage larger than minus 5 means we are in negative saturation region. Uh, larger than minus 5 means we're going to the right. Okay. So that's the That's the transfer characteristics for this circuit. And as for the as for the input characteristics, we have the following curve. The in holds I in amps. Okay. Here is the relation between current and voltage, let's call this. Negative. We have something like this. Two minus one over two. Minus one. That's the part of the curve corresponding to linear region. And at b equals minus 5, we reach negative saturation region. And to remain in negative saturation region, we go to the right. Okay, And we go to right with slope 3 over 4. Therefore, going right with slope, with slope 3 over 4, that's negative saturation region. The slope is 3 over 4. And then when we in this level volts, that means we have reached positive saturation region. And to remain in positive saturation region, we go to left. That means we are at positive saturation region. And we go left with slope 3 over 4 to remain in positive saturation region. And those two curves summarize all the pieces of the that we have figured out.